You are much too trusting. I had nothing to do with Alison Brevard's Well, I'm relieved to hear that. It's just unfortunate you don't have an alibi. All right, begin. what's going on youtube and welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are having a great start to your thursday let's go ahead and talk about this information that i received in regards to kim porter now for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of my integrity i would like to say that all this information that you're about to receive is alleged all right i'm talking to someone that claims to know information in regards to the kim porter situation it's a very reliable source in my opinion because of their connections to the hip-hop industry all right so let's get into it so to start off this video I want to bring up some information that some of you already may be privy to um, and I want to talk about the relationship that Kim Porter had with Shakir Stewart now for those of you who don't know who Shakir is he was a powerful dude in the music industry. He was based out of Atlanta. In fact, he worked for LaFace Records, right? And he had a hand in signing Beyonce, Sierra, Young Jeezy, and Rick Ross. And that's just to name a few. Then after leaving LaFace, he became the executive vice president for Def Jam. So the brother had all sorts of skills and talent within the music industry. Now, Diddy and Kim started dating in 1994, and they already had their son, Christian, when Diddy decided to leave Kim Porter in 1999 and chase J-Lo, right? So Diddy and J-Lo, they dated for a couple of years, but their relationship came to an end in 2001. So when Diddy and J-Lo's relationship came to an end, Kim Porter had already moved on with her life and naturally she started seeing other people. And one of those individuals that she was seeing was Shakir Stewart. Now, Diddy admitted he finally came to the conclusion that he was never going to get J-Lo back in 2001. So once that reality set in that J-Lo was a done deal, then he went back to Kim Porter, right? And tried to court her and he was ultimately successful. So when he got back with Kim, it was evident that Kim had been seeing other people. And I believe that he came across some text messages from Shakir. And so let me read to you all what a former ghostwriter for Diddy and Mark Curry had to say about this situation that went down between Diddy and Shakir and Kim Porter. Now, I want to say this. Mark Curry wrote a book in 2009. I believe it was published called Dancing with the Devil. And basically, he was exposing all of the things that Diddy did to his artists, all the bad things, how he did Biggie and things of that nature. But let me go ahead and read to you this portion about the subject at hand. So he says, Puff ran into Kim on an island. Somehow he found out a phone message from Shakir to Kim. How are my babies doing? Shakir asked her on the message. When Puff realized Kim was doing fine without him, he was incensed. After summoning a couple of his bodyguards, Puff left the palace and went to Shakir's room at the hotel. He bammed on Shakir's door until he answered it. What the blank you doing leaving messages on Kim's cell phone? Puff raged. Where do you get off saying you the daddy of my kids? Shakir knew that Puff never confronted anyone without backup, so he was afraid to defend himself. Now, according to Mark, a physical confrontation took place and it didn't end well for Shakir. And also it's been noted that a situation went down between Diddy and Kim over this situation and a doctor was flown out to actually reconstruct Kim's nose where she says she accidentally fell and hit her face on the table. Now, I've been told that the two events are separate. They happen on separate occasions. I'm told that Diddy took Kim on a vacation and he confronted Kim about the situation again and that's when their confrontation took place. Now I want to talk about Kenny Burns because Kenny Burns was close to Shakir Stewart as well but he's also close to Diddy. Now Diddy and Kenny's relationship go way back. I believe that when Biggie and Jay-Z first got on the scene they would go down to DC because that's where Kenny is from and Kenny would set up all these parties and you know performances by Jay-Z and Biggie 
and things of that nature and then Diddy hired Kenny and in fact I believe Burns still serves as the senior vice president of brand development for Combs Enterprises. Now I don't know if they're as tight as they once were because recently the two of them had some political differences where Diddy actually ended up blocking Kenny. So I'm pretty sure that they still work together but you know they're just on bad terms right now. But the one thing that is interesting about this whole dynamic is the fact that Kenny really does not believe the story of how Shakir left us prematurely. Now in 2008, Shakir left us way too early, but it was ruled that Shakir pardoned himself by the hands of his own if you catch my drift. Now, like I previously stated, Kenny did not believe that Shakir would do such a thing without setting up his family for the long haul and he's been having doubts ever since this situation occurred. Now, I've been told, right, this is where the exclusive comes in, that during the time that Shakir and Kim were dating, that Kim was giving Shakir all types of information about the nature of her and Diddy's relationship, and that Shakir knew a lot, and he knew too much, and Diddy didn't like that. And it was a lot of things that Kim should have kept to herself, according to Diddy, and she didn't. And he had very critical information in regards to the things that Diddy was doing behind the scenes and Kim Porter confided in him about a lot of things that were off limits in Diddy's eyes. Now it's also been expressed to me that even though Diddy put an end to Shakir and Kim's relationship that Shakir and Kim kept in contact all the way up until he unfortunately left us. I'm told that there were conversations where Kim talked to Shakir about the fact that Biggie wanted out of his contract and Biggie was ready to leave bad boy and that Diddy has expressed on many occasions that you know if he had anything to do with it that Biggie was not going to walk away from his label and leave him high and dry and so with Kim still communicating to Shakir behind the scenes that really infuriated Diddy and it's been said that Diddy warned Shakir in 2007 right he warned him to stop all communications with Kim. And so, you know, I guess Shakir and Kim, they may have stopped talking, they may have not, but what I do know is that Shakir left us in 2008. So it seems that Diddy wanted his cake and he wanted to eat it too. So this is the thing about the situation. It's like he wanted to do what he wanted to do, right? But he wanted to keep Kim single and isolated because of the information that she had, right? His number one fear was that Kim was going to get into a relationship with a strong dude with strong character that would actually challenge him and that would stand behind her to the point where Kim felt comfortable to tell her truth. Now, you have to ask yourself, you know, why didn't Kim get married again? All we know is that her and Al B. Sure was married. You know, she never married Diddy. So, you telling me that a beautiful woman of Kim's caliber couldn't find another man to want to marry her? Like... Why didn't she get married? It's because Diddy kept feeding her all of this nonsense about the nature of the relationship and how things should be. And Kim kept believing that one day, maybe one day, that Diddy and her will find some common ground and that he will ultimately marry her. But I've been told that in the last year, Kim started to have her doubts again and that Kim was looking to move from California because she really didn't like it out there. But she was torn because she didn't want to move her daughters, you know, again, away from Diddy. And Diddy would make her feel bad about that. And he will also confide in her about the fact that they need to stay together as a family, you know, to be a lot closer to one another, even though he was dating someone else. And so Kim was torn. But Kim ultimately wanted to move back to Georgia, is what I'm being told. I've also been told that she was looking at property in the area and that she was going to continue to write her book and things like that. And those are things that Diddy didn't like, you know. But I will say this, you know, Kim passed on a lot of information and you will be hearing from Kim Porter. Let me just put it out there like that. You will be hearing from Kim Porter. She passed on her information and you will be hearing from Kim Porter. All right. I can say that and I can say that with confidence because it's not over, right? Watch out for Kim Porter's story in the next couple of years, y'all. I'm just saying. But anyway, I'm gonna let this go. 
and let y'all have that in the comments drop down and let me know what you think about this entire situation don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and i'll get with you in the next video thanks for watching peace